As I mentioned earlier, there may be some of you out there hoping to get a little bit more bang out of your horticultural buck, and you want to grow some crops other than just lettuce and greens. Some of these crops are a little bit longer term, you know, 55 to 65 days, crops such as peppers and you know, tomatoes and eggplant. Uh, this may be the system for you. Uh, it's known as the Aeroflow, and it combines two well-known technologies, uh, the recirculating technology that we see in the NFT, and it combines that with a DWC or a deep water culture. And the way the system works is that we have a 400 GPH or gallon per hour pump located in this reservoir in the back, and that pump supplies this manifold here. And this manifold feeds a series of spray lines located in each one of these troughs. These spray lines are going to fill up these troughs with oxygen-rich nutrient. And the way it does that is each one of these spray lines is drilled with a series of small diameter holes, and those small diameter holes act as uh, providing a jet stream into that bath. So you, most of you have seen these three-inch net pots. Uh, if you've seen them either in a grow store or maybe in another system that you have, you probably have been using maybe hydrogen, you know, those little clay balls, or maybe you've been using those rock wool mini cubes. Uh, the problem with those are is they're very dirty, and eventually what will happen is, is they will begin to shed, and that fiber or that clay residue is going to filter back into your reservoir. And where do you think that residue uh, ends up? It's going to end up in your pump. And if your pump is, say, a mag drive pump, it's going to progressively wear that down. With a hardness of six, that, that silica dioxide, it's going to tear that pump up. If somehow your pump is able to pump that through the manifold, it's only going to serve to clog those small diameter holes that I talked about in the spray lines. What's great about this sure to grow product, this loose fill, is that once you get it in this net pot, it's going to settle down with a little bit of wet collapse, and that's going to keep that fiber trapped in that net pot. It's not going to migrate through your system, and hypothetically, even if it did, it's so soft, it's not going to damage your pump. So let's take a look at how we're going to plant this up. We're going to take a three inch net pot, right like this, and I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, sure to grow in here. Isn't this stuff awesome? You know, it's not itchy, I can play with it. You know, I'm not going to, you know, worry about breathing it. It's not going to get in my lungs and perforate my alveoli and, you know, cause me to wheeze when I'm 60 years old. So once I've done this, I'm going to take one of my transplants that I showed you over at the NFT, and I'm going to put it right inside this pot. I'm then going to fill the margin around it to lock that little cube right into place. Be a little gentle. Once I get that thing locked in there, right like this, I drop it right in. What's nice about this, too, is because STG is a non-wicking media, we can expect to see no algae growth along the top of this pot. Uh, that's really common with you know, either the clay balls or hydrogen because they both uh, have a tendency to pull that moisture up and transmit it to the upper surface. And when that comes in contact with this light, we're going to breed algae. With this, we don't really have that problem. So how do we know that STG is a far superior product? Well, we can take a look. This right here is a cucumber that I planted up in the STG Grow Media. And as you can see, stark white, beautiful roots. Okay, This is a very young plant. And I compare that to one that I planted up with rock wool at the exact same time. Uh, where are those roots at? Uh, conspicuously, they're missing. And uh, I attribute that to the fact that you know rock wool is going to provide this very brick-like substance that it's hard for those roots to penetrate, especially when they're in the juvenile stage. So what are things that we need to talk about when we're setting up the type of system like this? Well, let's talk about our light selection. Uh, right, right here, I'm using a T5 high-output fluorescent. And the reason I'm using that is because the plants that I'm growing in here right now aren't tremendously light dependent. If I was going to try and grow out some tomatoes or some cucumbers or some peppers to maturity in here, I would probably swap this out with a metal halide. As far as the nutrients is concerned, during the grow phases of my plants, I'm going to dose this, uh, this grow bath with uh, PPM somewhere around 13 to 1600. We're not talking about lettuce. We're talking about plants that are going to grow for 55 or 65 days. So we're going to up the ante a little bit with that nutrient. You know, once we see that our plants are about to bloom or they're you know starting to develop bud sets, we're going to drain this reservoir and we're going to swap that out for a bloom nutrient. A bloom nutrient is one that's going to be high in phosphorus and it's also going to have a fair amount of complex sugar. This is going to allow the plant to develop a rich set of buds and those buds are going to obviously turn into fruit, which consequently leads to a heavy harvest. And we're all looking for a heavy harvest. So I guess as a consumer, the question you should be asking yourself is, what can I expect? What type of results can I expect if I grow my plants out to maturity using sure to grow And the answer is, you're going to be blown away. Take a look at this uh, Genovese basil. We've grown this out to maturity right here. Not only is the foliage dense and it's verdant green, take a look at this root mass. Unbelievable, right? It's white. 
uh, indicating that we have an oxygen-rich environment, and I, I attribute that to the fact that sugar grow has all these void spaces. And not only does it have a tremendous amount of void space, it's free draining, which means every time that this bass circulates through this media, it's displacing that stale, oxygen-deprived solution and replacing it with some nutrient-rich oxygen, full nutrient. Take a look at this marigold right here. That's unbelievable. That's not anything you're ever going to find you know, if, uh, if this basket was full of hydrogen. So I think you're all going to be pleasantly surprised. I mean, give sure to grow a shot. I mean, look at the results that you can expect. In review, STG Looseville is not only clean, it's exceptionally easy to use. Unlike hydrogen, where you're lugging around a big heavy bag that's dirty, or you know, carrying these rockable blocks around that you might be you know, a little bit hesitant to handle because they make you itch, or you're afraid of inhaling the, the fiber, STG is safe. It's hygienic, and it's dust-free. It won't wick any water to the top, therefore the tops will stay pristine and white and algae-free. It provides the optimum environment for heavy root development, and it's free draining. That decreases the amount of root-borne diseases. You know, no more of that dampening off, a dramatic decrease in pythium. And with a dramatic decrease in pythium, chances of other pests like fungus gnats go away as well. So there's really no reason not to use SDG Looseville. In closing, if you have any questions about how to use sure to grow in this system, and not just grow good, but grow better, feel free to shoot me an email at grow at sure2grow.com. Thanks for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you in the future.